One of the more important aspects of any online community is what motivates your members. Uh, generally, you'll consider this to be engagement. Now, engagement can come in the form of comments, can be sharing your stuff online, can be tweeting about it, you know, anything that you can physically see, uh, that would be considered engagement. Uh, now, when you're looking at traffic, that won't be engagement, but that is connected to it. So how do you identify their motivation? How do you figure out what their needs are? Now, our guest speaker is actually going to be talking about what motivates an online community next week, so I'm not going to go into great detail about that. However, I will tell you how these communication theories will apply and help you understand exactly what their motivation level is going to be and how to fulfill those needs so they can surpass certain barriers and possibly engage in the form of comments on your site and go through the evolution of your uh, ecosystem. Um, so I might be throwing a couple extra words out there that don't make a lot of sense yet, but I will be breaking that down. Uh, and of course, you can ask me any questions. So through a magical thing called communication theory, or more specifically, computer-mediated communication theory, uh, what people like to call CMC because it's a little shorter, uh, that is going to be your answer. So, Professor Wikipedia says CMC is defined as any communication transaction that occurs through the use of two or more network computers. For example, this class. Um, essentially, what we're doing right now is I'm presenting you information. Uh, you're hearing my voice. You're seeing this presentation. So, this is going to be a form of communication. And we'll kind of go into that in just two seconds. So, here, unfortunately, it's a little blurry. There it goes. The Shannon Weaver model of communication, it's one of the most basic forms and models that you'll see when it comes to it. Um, so I'll kind of use this as a backbone. I would highly suggest you look into this one as well, but we're not going to go into great detail because there are uh, three communication theories that I would rather talk about and one psychological one, and I will get to that in just about a second. So let's take a look at this as an example. On the left, you see the sender, which for this example would be me. On the right, the receiver, which is each of you. So right now, what I'm doing is sending a message. I'm teaching you about online communities, and by doing that, I'm encoding this in a format so that I believe you can comprehend what I'm trying to uh, get you all to understand. Uh, so that means I'm trying to break it down to such a process that you'll be able to understand it uh, without uh, as much interference in there. Now in the middle you have the channel. Uh, the channel is obviously going to be live stream or our computers or a combination of that. Uh, I'm providing these, you know, the presentation, uh, my auditory message as well, and that would be sending to you through the signal. Now, of course, noise comes into different uh, aspects as well. Sorry, I'm just pulling up some notes here. Uh, noise can be anything from psychological noise, physical noise, or semantic noise. Now, that could be anything from me clicking the mouse, and that's distracting you. Uh, possibly you're distracted by the blurry images on the screen. Anything that's influencing how I uh, intended a message to come across could, in fact, alter how you decode the message. Uh, when you decode the message, basically what that means is it's how you comprehend what I'm saying. So if you're not using the same language that I'm using, uh, the visual is not really something that you prefer, maybe you're an auditory learner, um, then you'll decode the message in a different format than I had initially intended. And of course, that means you receive that message. So when you receive the mes message, if we're face to face, that means I can see you personally, I can read your expressions, your body movement, uh, and maybe you'll uh, respond with some questions so that I know you're listening, or you'll respond at the end of something of that nature. Obviously, because we're on computers, I can't see you physically. Um, so how this model will differ from computer-mediated communication. Uh, it works as I will be receiving information and feedback from you directly in the form of either questions or responses later on. 
So that would be the base of communication theory. Someone sends a message, it gets encoded, it goes through the channel, you decode it, and you receive it. 